Hello again gamers, welcome back to the Board Game Captain. I'm the Board Game Captain, and today I'm going to be counting down my top 10 favorite games from Z-Man Games. Before we get started, I want to say that if you would like to get yourself some cool gamer gear, t-shirts, mugs, even a sticker, you can head over to my Teespring store, there's a link in the description below. And if you're in a position to and like to help with the channel, as well as get access to early release videos, and even the ability possibly to request review and tutorial videos to your favorite classic games, there's a link to my Patreon in the description down below. Now, Z-Man Games, they are a big game company that's been in existence for a long time and been a big part of the tabletop gaming hobby for years. So, I'm going to count down of the games of theirs that I have played what are my top 10 favorites. So, I'm not going to do any further ado. We're just going to jump on into it with my number 10. Number 10. My number 10 favorite game from Z-Man Games is... The Choose Your Own Adventure War with the Evil Power Master. Now, a number of years ago, Z-Man Games got the rights to uh, make some Choose Your Own Adventure games. The first one they put out was House of Danger. I thought that one was pretty good and had some promise, but then I thought War with the Evil Power Master was just overall a better game, and that's why it made my list, while the House of Danger did not. So, War with the Evil Power Master is more of a complete actual board game. Uh, the original one, House of Danger, was very linear. You, 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 you had a couple branching paths you could go on, but in War with Evil Power Master, there's multiple planets, and you actually really decide where are we going to fly, what adventures are we going to go on, let's start on a different planet this time, that sort of thing, which really made it a much more involved game. And then, of course, the game is a storytelling game where you go and you go on these adventures, you make choices, you have stats that help you to defeat challenges and beat bad guys, and hopefully, eventually, defeat the evil Power Master. Also, this game is absolutely wonderful and full of unbelievable amounts of jokes. Um, my favorite line of jokes in this is referencing this war. I think it was called the Purple Days War. So then, like, there's tons of puns about it being purple. Like, there was a, a, a bit where one of the characters exclaimed, Oh, the violet violence. <laughs> and it always just cracks me up. And that's why war, uh, Choose Your Own Adventure, War with the Evil Power Master is my number 10 favorite game from Z-Man Games. Number 9. My number nine favorite game from Z-Man Games is a classic and is got to be up there as, as one of the most influential games for modern gaming in general uh, because it is one that really uh, helped spur on the revolution in modern tile-laying games. So many games that come out now draw their lineage directly from this game, and that is Carcassonne. So there have been tons of versions of Carcassonne, but I decided to put the original on my list because the original, in my opinion, is still one of the best versions, and its simplicity really shines through. It's, it's one of those games that's very easy to learn, but hard to master, and it's, it's really just a game about building areas walled in of certain types of terrain and putting one of your meeples on it so you can control that and getting the most points for having the largest areas. It's not super complicated, but then they added in tons of expansions so you could add complexity if you wanted and lots of different versions down the line. You could almost say that this is for the whole Carcassonne family, but I'm really claiming it for original Carcassonne because I actually, I actually think the original Carcassonne is a version that thoroughly holds up. This is one that... um. I had actually bought an electronic version of and played unbelievable amounts of times uh, because the game is just super addicting. It, and it really is. It really is that great. And that's why Carcassonne is my number nine favorite game from Z-Man Games. Number eight. My number eight favorite game from Z-Man Games is Nitwit. Now, this is a game that really, really reminds me a lot of an older kind of party word game that I loved a lot called uh, Scategories, which is one that I've been playing since I was a kid. But Nitwit did it in a new and interesting way. So the thing with Nitwit is you've got a bunch of uh, components that are very reminiscent of crafting items. There are spools that look like from spools of thread. There are, are bits of string and there are clothespins and things like that. So every round you put out a spool with a number on it. And then you take a bit of thread, 
with a clothespin on it and you take a random category and attach it to the clothespin and you have to put that around at least one of the spools sometimes multiple spools and when everyone's done this a few times you've got all the spools out and all the threads out you then have to look at the categories and look where the spools are and you have to write something down for that number spool because you have numbers on your pad that fits in all of the categories so like uh if the categories for this one particular spool are like huge and green and fictional you know one player might put the jolly green giant another player might put the incredible hulk uh, if you put the same thing as one of your opponents though you're canceled out so if the next player also put the incredible hulk for that one the two incredible hulk players are canceled out but the jolly green giant player is going to get points you get points based on how many categories it had to fill so three categories is a lot and filling that without being canceled out with someone else is huge that would get you a bunch of points this game is a lot of fun uh, I thoroughly enjoyed it. It's very light, but it's very enjoyable, and it's one of those games that you can pull out and play with just about anyone. And that is why Nitwit is my number eight favorite Z-Man game. Number seven. My number seven favorite Z-Man game is a game I didn't even really know was being published by them because uh the copy i had was released by portal games but apparently z-man was publishing it at least at one point and that is niroshima hex 3.0 so niroshima hex is this this really really ingenious gaming system where you slowly build out tiles on the board it's made to represent a battle but it does it in this very abstract way where you slowly put out tiles that will show in what direction and at what range they can attack, how much damage they do, and what their initiatives. So you know what order they're going in. But then none of them actually do anything until someone plays a battle tile. And once the battle tile happens, all hell breaks loose. You're like, okay, who has the highest initiative? They go, they attack them there and do damage. And they go and they attack. Oh, oh, but they got killed, so they can't attack now. And they had a special ability happen where they got netted, and now they can't attack. Or they, or they do less damage, or whatever it might be. And it's crazy. And then you build up again and you do another battle. And this happens a few times through the game. Uh, you have a base that you're trying you're trying to destroy your enemy's base while defending your own. If your base gets destroyed, you're done. Uh, this is a really cool game. And it is strategy, uh, tactics, battle done in a really unique and different sort of way. There have been some games since then that were definitely influenced by Niroshima Hacks. But when it came out, this was a very unique game. There was nothing else on the market like it. Uh, very ingenious, very th uh, thought-provoking, while still holding a fair amount of randomness, because you do randomly draw the tiles up uh, into your hand to then choose one of to play. You do get to then choose one of the ones you draw, but there is some randomness into you don't know where in the stack of tiles or certain tiles but then uh, there are lots of different forces to choose they are asymmetrical with ace so you have total asymmetrical abilities some forces are better at certain uh parts of the game than others some forces are faster than others or stronger than others some have cooler special abilities and they release tons of expansions with tons of new forces for you to play with and that is all why Niroshima Hex 3.0 is my number seven favorite game from Z-Man Games number six my number six favorite game from Z-Man Games is one that's kind of new on me. Uh, it's one I tried fairly recently, and it is Halea Kala. Now, Halea Kala is a two-player game from Z-Man Games, and it is very different in uh, than a lot of other the uh, heads-up two-player games. It's not a two-player card game. It's not a abstract strategy game. It's not a war game. It's it's weird because it's this. It's it plays very much like a Euro game, but strictly in this two-player strategy way. Uh, you play these numbers on different areas of the beach, and you uh, and there are cards on each of the areas of the beach. And if you you can play a, a number down and then move your piece around on the board and try to slowly move up the volcano and get yourself into spots where you can build statues, because statues can get you lots of points. But you also have to be careful not to build up statues in areas that are getting lava, because when the lava flows down, it can destroy your statues. The higher up the volcano you are able to build your statues, the more points they're going to be worth. But then also there's this boat that goes around the island and if you play a one of the number tiles on the beach next to the boat 
you can move the boat that number of spaces and whatever area of beach it lands in whoever has the higher number total for their tiles in that area will get to pick the first of the cards from that and take it while the other player gets the other one and those cards can be things to give you extra abilities or or bonus points or collectibles to get bonus points later uh, all sorts of cool things and then you randomly deal up more tile more cards to replace the ones you took and some of those cards you deal up can sometimes randomly put lava in that part of the volcano which again when it comes down may destroy some of the statues there this is a really cool and unique sort of two-player euro game strategy experience i i thoroughly enjoy it uh it was one that lynn bought me as a present and i think was a great present really a lot of fun and also it's it's pretty cool in that it goes with what is a in my opinion a very underutilized um theme which is the hawaiian mythological themes you with with mythological themes you often see people go straight into uh greco-roman norse to a lesser extent egyptian but a lot of the others get ignored you don't see too much with hawaiian and i really like that they went with the the uh hawaiian theme uh there's some myth stuff in there but actually a lot of it's actually more just hawaiian in general it's about hawaii uh, in fact i believe haleakala is actually the name of a volcano over in hawaii or it might be the word for volcano in Hawaiian not 100% positive on which one that is but the game is great and it is really cool and it is a really unique and fun theme and that is why Haleakala makes it all the way down to my number six favorite game from Z-Man Games number five my number five favorite game from Z-Man Games is a game that I first tried at Gen Con. It was actually the last Gen Con that we were able to physically go to. And it was in the BGG Hunt Games Room. We went in, uh, it was my friend Aaron, Lynn, and I, and we were looking for some games to play, and we picked it up, and it was Noctiluca. And we didn't really know what to expect. We saw that there were lots of dice uh, in it, and it, it was very colorful. Uh, other than that, we didn't really know anything about it. So we grabbed it, we're like, let's give this game a try, and we played it, and we were all blown away. The game is so cool. Uh, so you get all the dice kind of like randomly put out. They're rolled and randomly put out in random color combinations on the different spaces uh, across the board. And then what you do is you have a pawn, and you have to place it in a new spot, and you have to pick a direction from the pawn in a straight line across the board. And in that direction, you pick a number, and all the dice of that number you get to pick up. And then you have these goal cards, which have different color squares on it. After you pick them up, the, what number they're on doesn't matter anymore. Just the color matters. So if you have one that has like two orange and two purple and a blue, and you picked up an orange and two pur and um, two purple, you put those on. But the rest of the dice that you couldn't use, and you couldn't use for any of your cards, you're going to pass to the next player. And that way they kind of do like a bit of dice drafting. And then they're like, okay, well, I can use this. And they pass the rest to the next player. And you pass it around the table in this way until everyone's had a chance to get some. And then the rest are discarded and it moves on to the next player. This game is really cool and really fun and also feels very analytical and very strategic. You wind up looking around on the board and really thinking about, I can get more dice here, but you know what? That's not the best spot because here I can actually use more of the dice that I get. But if I go there, I can grab dice and, and even though it's less dice, they're ones that my opponents really need. And I can use those right now and stop them from getting them. But you don't want to go to a space that has lots of dice, but very few that you need. Because then you're going to be giving all those extra dice to your opponents. So it, it, it's very cool in that way. You have to uh, be very analytical about it. It's very thinky, very brain burning, Very cool. Uh, there's a little bit of randomness in the, in, in the beginning and with the drawing of the cards and with the initial rolls of the dice. But other than that, uh, after that, it's all very strategic and tactical. Very beautiful looking game, very fun game, and that is why Noctiluca, which I believe means nightlight, is my number five favorite Z-Man game. Number four. My number four favorite Z-Man game is a game that I think achieves the rare status of being a game that I would say everyone should have a copy of in their collection. And it's not because it's the best game on the list, because it's obviously the number four, not the number one, but it's specifically because it fills this bizarre niche uh, that is not filled by by almost any other game. It has this unique play style that, that really feels like it should be represented in everyone's game collection, and that is Parade. So Parade is a game with a tacked on Alice in Wonderland feel, but the game itself is this very interesting 
game where, where you're slowly playing cards into a draw. The draw is the parade, and the parade gets longer and longer. Now, you don't want to have to take cards from the parade. And when you play a card at the end of the parade, whatever the number you played was, that many cards are safe after. So if you play a five, the first five cards in the parade, after the one you played, you don't have to take. After that, any cards that either match the color of the card you played, so let's say my five was a five blue, and there's a blue in the, uh, blue card in there, I have to take that, or any cards that are, that are equal to or less than the number I played, so any fives or less. So if, uh, if there's a blue eight and a four of red, I got to take those, and I put them face up in front of myself. And now those are worth points at the end of the game, but points are bad because you want to be the lowest scoring person at the end of the game. But then, at the end of the game, if you have the most of any color, you can flip them all face down. And face down cards are only worth one point apiece. So there's this weird dynamic where you don't want any cards. But if you have cards, you want the most of that suit. Because having the most of that suit would turn those 10s and 9s and 8s into 1s. Which makes them far less point giving and points are bad points are bad in parade so um it, it's actually easier than it sounds like when you first explain it to people everybody's always like oh this sounds complicated but then you play it and you're like oh okay no i get it this is easy but it's it's amazingly fun amazingly cool the scoring mechanism is so interesting and like i say this is one that i would recommend to everyone i think everyone should have a copy of parade in their collection and that is why parade makes it all the way down to my number four favorite Z-Man game. Number three. My number three favorite Z-Man game is one of my favorite pattern forming games. So this is Tosh Kalar. Now this is one that uh, was very confusing to me because on the cover it looks like a gladiatorial fight between mythical creatures. But then you look at the back of the box and you're like, wait, what is this? This doesn't sound like a gladiatorial fight. The theme is totally tacked on. Don't hold that against it, though, because the game is amazing. So the actual gameplay is you're playing pieces onto the board looking to make patterns based on the cards in your hand. Your cards in your hand have patterns on them. When you make a pattern that matches the card in your hand, you get to play that card, and then it will get you points and will also let you do attacks that let you destroy pieces of your opponents on the board which they're trying to do to also form patterns it's all about pattern forming it's really what it's about um this is a really cool pattern forming game i like it best at two players but you can even play it at three and four and it's awesome that way as well uh very ingenious game originally published by check games edition but z-man had done a uh joint publishing with them i guess i think here in the united states is where that was done uh and it is like i said it is actually one of my favorite pattern forming games of all time and this is another one where everyone has a unique deck which makes you have asymmetrical patterns asymmetrical powers uh for your force and they came out with a bunch of expansions with new asymmetrical groups and i love the expansions i love all the different forces and it's it's really awesome and that is why tosh Kalar is my number three favorite z-man game number two my number two favorite Z-Men game is one that they were publishing for a little while, but are actually no longer the ones in charge of publishing. It's actually moved on from them, but because they did do it for a time, it's on my list. And it is a game that is actually more well known for having been originally uh, widely published by Mayfair Games back when they were around. And that is Lords of Vegas. I absolutely adore Lords of Vegas. I think Lords of Vegas is one of the best replacements for Monopoly. Not that it's the best game that replaces Monopoly, but it replaces Monopoly the best because the, the mechanics in it really do, uh, you know, in a very proper way, replace the older, outdated mechanics of Monopoly in a new, better format. It is a game where you are slowly uh, getting property and building up casinos in Las Vegas, trying to get casinos on the Strip, trying to get bigger casinos, doing hostile takeovers of your opponent's casinos, and scoring points for those casinos and trying to have the biggest score at the end of the game. And that, that is one of the biggest things is there was a definite end, so it cannot drag on forever like Monopoly used to. Uh, there is still a fair amount of randomness in this, but you, you don't live or die by the randomness. It's really much more about your strategy and your tactics in, in building up your casino empire in Las Vegas. Every turn, a random card is drawn, which tells you whether or not a, uh, a group of casinos will pay out based on the color of the casino or 
occasionally all casinos on the strip pay out, which is why it's best to have casinos that touch the strip so they can both pay out for their color and for being on the strip. And when they pay out, they pay out money, but then also whoever is the boss of that casino gets points for them. And you want to have, again, most points by the end of the game. Not super complex, but super fun. This is a great game that I think is going to be one of the most played economic games uh, of all my economic games in my collection. Really good game. Um, I'll pull it out anytime. Uh, even though we often play it slightly wrong because we do house rule a few things and it, it's freaking fantastic even by its base rules. And I highly recommend Lords of Vegas. This is another one that I feel like should be in just about everybody's collection while you should not have a copy of Monopoly. Throw away your copy of Monopoly. Get Lords of Vegas. And now it is time for number one. My number one favorite Z-Man game is another one that I feel like is a replacement to a classic game. But in, this one is not an economic game. This one is a battle game. And it is a bit of a bluffing game. And it is a replacement to Stratego, in my opinion. And that is Thunder and Lightning. Originally published under the name Hera and Zeus, Thunder and Lightning is a game where you take on the mythological characters of Thor and Loki. They switched the theme from being Greco-Roman to Norse mythology, and you fight for control of Asgard. But you fight in a way where you play cards face down, and you don't know what card is there until the card straight across from you attacks it, and then you both have to reveal and see who is more powerful and who defeats the other. And you're slowly looking to try to find a single card in each other's decks that is the card that if you discover it and it gets discarded, you win the game. Uh, the thing ab about it is you can play that card in the back of one of your lines of cards, or you can try to hide it in your hand, but there are cards called Ravens that you can use to attack cards in your opponent's hand. And if you attack a card in their hand, they have to discard it. So if, if they're hiding it in their hand every once in a while, probing them with, with Ravens will make them want to throw it out on the board. And then, of course, you are going to throw out big monsters and warriors and gods to fight through lines of enemies and try to find that one card. It's kind of like the flag in Stratego. If you find it, game over. That's it. This game is amazing. I absolutely love Thunder and Lightning. This is one of my favorite two-player, just heads-up, uh, like battle strategy type games. And I love the way it borrows the mechanic from Stratego, but it does it in a more streamlined and cooler way. There's no time spent walking across the board. It's just attack, 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 because that's what you do. Um, the only time you're not attacking is when you know you're outmatched, in which case you're spending actions drawing cards and trying to, to find new, better cards to throw out there. But drawing cards uh, quickly like that can, can lead to you accidentally drawing that one card that if your opponent attacks it, will end the game for you. So it's very cool in that way. Uh, very interesting game. Love this game. This is a, a great one to bring when you can go out again to the pub or coffee house. It's great to play there. I myself have done that many times. It is why... Thunder and Lightning is my number one favorite Z-Man game. So there you have it. Those are my top 10 favorites. Let me know in the comments down below, what are your favorite games that Z-Man Games has published over the years? And if you enjoyed this video and like me to see me do more top 10 lists like this, be sure to give this video a like, share it on all forms of social media. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to the board game Captain. That's Captain spelled with a K on YouTube. And until next time, game on.